Hey guys, how's it going? This is your boy Blacklighting4547. This is my new series, How Things Work, by your boy and yours truly. So, in this series, we're going to go over how things work. Simple as that, really. We're going to go over how devices work, you know, initiating devices, uh, control panels, things in that nature. So, let's go ahead and get started with this series. attention please may i have your attention please there has been a fire alarm reported in the building there has been a fire alarm reported in the building please proceed to the stairways and exit the building all right let's go ahead and get started with the video now today's topic even though it might it may seem like a simple topic there is a lot of confusion and let me tell you why is how these things work behind the scenes now before we actually start I'm joining the Skype call with Safeman4202. And he's going to be over here assisting me if I just, if I miss anything or not. So, what, I'm, what do I mean normally, uh, normally close or open uh, contact devices? What do I mean? What are, what is normally open? What is normally closed? What does that mean? Well, like I said, these the pole stations and conventional heat detectors both operate very similarly. And let me tell you why. Because these both have contacts. I forgot to mention now, water flow switches and tampa switches, but that will be a different station. topic. You guys see these everywhere. Okay, obviously. You guys know how, you know, you pull the handle down, it will activate the fire alarm system. But do you guys actually know how, uh, you know... These activate a fire alarm system. Well, this is how that's what you gotta got. This is what we're gonna go over today. So, as you can see, I have my notifier LNG1R pull station right here. As you can see, it's a dual action pull station. It requires you to press in and then pull down. That's what dual action is. Now, let's go behind it. This is the magic of a pull station. Now, obviously, you guys, you guys collected, and you guys obviously know, seen these before on the back of pole stations. Right here that you're looking at is a normally closed switch. And let me tell you, what is that? Let me go ahead and tell you. So, like I said before, first of all, there's always power flowing to these devices. Now... The contacts within these devices is dictates, you know, the current status of the pull station. So as you can see, the pull station is not activated and the handle is up. Okay. This handle was pushing into this button right here. It's preventing this to be normally closed. So first of all, what does that mean by what I what do I mean by that? So, we have normally closed, which is NC, abbreviation, and then normally open, abbreviated, NO. So, when, when I mean when the button is normally closed, I mean when it's not pressed. Keep in mind, when it's not pressed, the contacts inside the pull station are closed, meaning that the circuit is completed, meaning that from one, the electrons can flow from one point to the other through the switch. There's no breaks, no none of that. This is, in simple terms, the switch is on. Just keep that in mind. Very simple terms. On, off. On, off. Now, when the pole station is in its normal state like this, when it's not pulled, it's normally open. Meaning that the electrons cannot flow through this switch. Okay. There's a break right here. As you can see, as I drew right here, this contact is not right here. Now, like I said before, the, now, like I said, these switches are either connected to a conventional pulse, uh, conventional fire alarm control panel 
or a mini mantra module if the system is addressable. So, you have these hooked up to a zone, or you, if you don't even have a panel, you know, you have it hooked up to a battery. Now, like I said, you don't even hook these up, you know, if you have a battery set up. You don't hook these up to a negative or positive, either on the negative side or the positive side. So, like I said, when you got this attached to a fire alarm control panel, right, to a zone, the initiating device circuit, you know what I'm saying? The zone, and by the way, what a zone is, is basically a group of devices. And it's the same thing with addressable panels, too. When the addressable, when the when there's a few devices grouped together, that is a zone. And in basically, in simple terms, a zone is basically is a certain area in the building. That's what a zone is, basically. So basically, when you have zones on a conventional pole, uh, conventional uh, fire alarm control panel, those zones can cover different area uh, in areas in the building. So you got, like I said, zone one could be kitchen. Uh, zone two could be the in main entrance. Uh, zone three could be the auditorium, and so on and so forth. All those devices are basically grouped together in a zone. That's basically what a zone is, uh, that in simple terms. Now, you got devices. You know, normally close, open, close contact devices on the zone, right? Or in mini monitor module if its system is addressable. The zone is always monitoring, or the mini mini miniature module <laughs> is always monitoring the current status of this switch of a pole station or a heat detector. Okay, so when you pull this, John, right? As you can see, this button right here pops out. This is normally closed status right here. This is normally open, that's normally closed. Now there's also buttons that can be vice versa. When they're no, there could be normally open buttons when, you know, when they're not pressed is open. When it's pressed in, closed. But pull stations don't use those buttons because obviously if the handle will be up, it would just cause an alarm. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that, you want the vice versa. So you have normally closed buttons, which means when the button is out, it's shorted, or AKA on, when the button is pressed in, off. So that will initiate a fire alarm on a control panel, or like I said, if you have a mini module module, like I said, with all these pole stations on the system, all of them have mini monitor modules. And those are also monitoring the current status of that switch. And when that um, when that switch or aka a pull station gets pulled, that switch goes from normally closed, and then it will short that module, and then then that module will tr uh, transmit that data to the control panel, and then that control panel will receive that data, and that will initiate a fire alarm. Okay, so that's how basically pole stations work. Very simple. Like I said, there's always power going to them. There's always power, but the contacts within the switches dictate the flow of that power, basically. Very simple. Now, like I said, now let's go over heat detectors. Now, like I said, heat detectors work similarly too. You got you have a set of contacts. Okay. Yes, that's that's exactly what I said. Um, you got your little disc right here. Now, like I said, you got your little negative, you got your little positive boot thing, right? So when the disc is cool, right? There's no fire, there's no heat around. You know, it's normally open. And oh, no. Okay, when that heat when that disc starts heating up, okay, that 
contact right here will press up against the other two contacts, creating a short. Normally closed. Okay. So I can just see there's no flow right here. Electrons, the power, can't simply flow through this device. However, when the device is activated, power can now flow through this device, creating a short on the zone or the mini mantra module that's behind this device that will transmit data to that control panel. And that's when that when it receives that data, that's when it will initiate a fire alarm. So like I said, that's how heat detectors work. That's how pulse stations work. Very, very, very simplistic. And like I said, guys, we 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 do this out of the kind of our hearts, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, fire alarm systems are no, you know, they're no joke. Even though they're classified as low lower voltage, you know, 12 volts DC, 24 volts DC. It doesn't matter. Exactly. But the thing is, you can still injure yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Especially, like I said, the high. Um, current 120 volts AC for the main power that's going into the, these panels. Um, oh, also, I would like to say, if you are a fire alarm enthusiast, that's great. Uh, if you're out in, if you're out in public and you see something wrong with a system, don't touch it. It's not your responsibility. If anything, you let management know. But that is not your job. Do not touch anything that you are not authorized to touch. I can't stress that enough. AKA tampering, you know what I'm saying? Don't like I said, it's all fun and games, but it's not, you know when it when you're liable for something, you know what I'm saying? It's bad for you. It's game over. You know what I'm saying? You know a lot of money, and you know you can get jail time and, and things like that. So like I said, it's really not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and go on your go on eBay, go purchase a couple of devices mess with them on your own time you know what i'm saying but when these are professionally installed just do your drill diligence and just mind your own business report it to the right person in that and then they'll take care of it with their um contractor you know what i'm saying of that system but like i said don't you know try to take things on your own you know what i'm saying because you're not licensed at the end of the day so if shit goes at your wire is bad for you because you are now liable and now you can deal with a lot of fines and jail time and things like that. So like I said, I can't stress enough. David can't stress enough either. You know, these things are really not toys at the end of the day. They're life safety. You know what I'm saying? They're meant to save lives, a pre uh preventative, you know what I'm saying? A uh, property damage, you know, as long as as well as, you know, make sure that everyone uh, gets warned and you know they get to evacuate the building efficiently and you know save their lives from the damn fire because like i said fires ain't no joke you know what I mean? so and other than that guys hope you guys understand normally open closed contact devices okay that was today's video i'm going to be going over um notification appliances too strobes synchronized strobes mechanical horns bells um, as well as control panels as well. So like I said, guys, you know, make sure, you know, if you like this series, you know, hit it with a thumbs up, comment, and make sure you subscribe. And also, I see that 700 subscriber count. I'm not oblivious. I thank you guys so much for that. And like I said, um, there will be a system test probably some point this week. I'm not sure. It might be uh, another requested system test. And also, I'm on a hunt for an enunciator, too, since you guys have been requesting that a lot. So, I'm going to try to get an enunciator for uh, the system. is most likely going to be LCD ADF. So, be prepared for that unboxing video. And I got some more devices coming for you guys. Um, but like I said, I'm a college student. I'm going to try my best to get uh, this content pushed out and things like that. So, yeah, guys. So, hope you guys under really understand. The concept of normally open close um, devices right here. You know, this is for pole stations and this is for heat detectors. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this series. It's your boy, Black Line the I'm Sick Man 42. You got anything else to say?
go check out my uh, latest video that I uploaded yesterday. That's not copyrighted. No, it's not. And we out this, John.